Tim Tebow and the Denver Broncos are riding a Rocky Mountain high. Winners of five straight and six of their last seven in dramatic fashion. Football League on a beautiful December afternoon in Denver, Colorado. As the first place Broncos get set to host the Chicago Bears on Fox. Good afternoon, everybody. Kenny Albert along with Daryl Johnston and Tony Saragusa. The Denver Broncos have become must-see TV. Winners of five straight games, Daryl. They've won the last three after trailing in the fourth quarter. And you can't talk about the Denver Broncos without talking about Tim Tebow. You know, it doesn't really matter whether or not you like the way he plays the quarterback position. You have to respect him as a football player. His desire to be the best, his will to win has become infectious on this Broncos team. Watch the defense. Champ Bailey and Brian Dawkins will be on the sideline watching him lead this Bronco offense. And on the other side, the Chicago Bears in desperate need of a victory. They started the season 7-3 and three, but have lost both games after losing quarterback Jay Cutler. And Caleb Haney has been the quarterback for those two starts. He's taken a lot of heat, but he hasn't gotten very much help. How many times have we seen the Chicago Bears win a game with their defense taking the ball away and scoring a touchdown? Or Devin Hester on a big return, that offensive line taking control of the line of scrimmage in the run game. Those three areas have to step up today and give Caleb Haney some help. Daryl, time now for the logistics of the game brought to you by UPS My Choice. Sign up now at ups.com forward slash my choice to get home delivery that fits your life. Well, lost in Tebow mania is a Denver Bronco defense is playing very well. It's this group that allows them to play this offensive style, and the Chicago Bears have to get off to a quick start. Caleb Haney said we have to have a sense of urgency at the start of the game. Downstairs to the Goose, Tony Siragusa caught up earlier with Tim Tebow. So Daryl and I were having a discussion whether you're a quarterback with a defensive mentality or you're a linebacker playing quarterback. Just a football player. I grew up playing, you know, in the backyard with older brothers that would beat me up and you'd play everything. We'd be at quarterback and I'd be like, I'm Danny Warfel. We'd go to receiver, and, you know. I'd be like, I'm Jerry Rice. You'd go to DB. I'm Charles Woodson. <laughs> He's still playing in the league, you know. <laughs> More from Goose coming up, but first, today's NFL Mobile Moment presented by Verizon. Fifty-two degrees and sunny here in Denver as we head down to the field and Tony Sergusigus. Thanks, Kenny. Tebow mania has swept the nation, but I can't lie to you. Coming here to Denver this week, I wasn't sold until I got a chance to meet Tim Tebow. I'm gonna tell you a little something about this kid. He's tough. He's positive. He's full of energy. He loves to hit people, and when you talk to the guys on his defense, he's got a screw loose, which is my favorite attribute. From one guy with a screw loose to another, you just gotta love the way this kid, Tim Tebow, plays the game. Thanks, Goose. Darrell is Tony saying that he himself has only one screw loose? I think there's multiple screws that need tightening on that man. Well, we would have an opportunity to see Tim Tebow at work in just a moment because the Bears won the toss but deferred. Kickoff sails through the end zone. So Tim Tebow and the Broncos will start from their own 20-yard line. And I think the one thing that the Denver Broncos have seen from Tim Tebow is an improvement from week to week. And he talked to us about where he is now compared to where he was last year, just light years ahead of it. And I think you saw a good, uh, a good example of that last week against Minnesota. He beat Minnesota with his arm, not his legs. Broncos without wide receiver Eddie Royal today suffered a concussion last week. First and 10 from the 20-yard line, the handoff to Willis McGahey, who gains three. Out to the 23-yard line, Lance Briggs made the tackle. And it's funny, when, when you talk to the Bears defense, what they're afraid of is Willis McGahey and the traditional style of running the football. This Broncos offensive line is one of five starting five groups that's been together all season long. They're very good. This is going to be a game not based on how well the option functions. That's a complimentary piece, but how well they block in the traditional run game. Four. McGahey closing in on 900 yards. 
for the season. Tebow out of the shotgun, hands it off to McGahee once again. No gain as he's wrapped up by Nick Roche. Third and seven coming up as we check out the Bears defensive unit. And one of the things I think that's going to be to the Bears' advantage is the speed in this group, the athleticism on the edges. And they actually said as they went back and prepared for this game and looked at all their option stuff, one of the things they felt, they got better across the board. Three wide receivers set for the Broncos. Third down and seven. Denver must get to the 30 for first down. Tebow in trouble. And he is down back at the 21-yard line. I'll tell you what, Darrell, that defensive line did a great job with not only their pass rush, but squeezing the pocket. I mean, they haven't stopped yet. They still want to squeeze that pocket if you look at them. One thing we got to keep our eyes on is that defensive lineman and how they go and rush Tim Tebow. You watch right here. You see the four down linemen. They come. Now watch how none of them get out of their lanes. There's nowhere for Tebow to go. That's how they're going to go get sacks. That's how they can go and keep Tim Tebow under control today. Henry Melton with the sack, his seventh of the season. Broncos lead the league in three and outs. They go three and out on their opening possession. Devin Hester back deep. Britton Colquitt waiting at his seven-yard line. is called for by Hester at the 41 setting up terrific field position for Caleb Haney and the Bears early scores Saints leading the Titans by five at the two minute warning how about the Falcons they have come all the way back Darrell from a 23-7 deficit down in Charlotte there are a couple of big comebacks in these early games Detroit jumped out to a 21 nothing lead the Minnesota Vikings come back to within one touchdown and the Houston Texans had come from behind fashion they trailed 19-10 Houston will clinch the division if the Saints hang on and defeat the Tennessee Titans. Caleb Haney out of Colorado State making his third start for the Bears, able to get rid of it. Khalil Bell makes the catch back to the 39-yard line, but he's tackled by Brian Dawkins. Loss of a yard on the play. And we talked about getting off to a quick start for this Bears offense. Pretty lethargic in the first quarter of the last couple of games. Marion Barber is going to be your featured back today. But we will see Khalil Bell in a supplemental role. Maybe a different style of blocking for these guys up front. Maybe not so much of the down block and pull around to get on the edge that is Matt Forte's strength. But maybe some more zone blocking for a one-cut move for Marion Barber and Khalil Bell. So no Jay Cutler, no Matt Forte. Second down and 11, the handoff to Barber. And the former Cowboy takes it up to the 44-yard line. Gate of four, Marcus Thomas made the tackle. Well, this is a defense that was not happy with their performance last week. They gave up career highs to Christian Ponder, the quarterback, Toby Gerhardt, the running back, and Percy Harvin, the wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. Von Miller back in the lineup today. He's a difference maker. Everybody you talk to is worried about his speed, that first step coming off the edge, and a very veteran secondary for the Denver Broncos. Miller, the rookie out of Texas a and Third down and seven for the Bears. And a timeout is taken by the Broncos. First charge timeout, Denver. Early first quarter in Denver. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. to Denver, third down and seven for the Bears, following the Broncos' timeout. Ball start, number 67, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Right guard, Chris Spencer. The Denver Broncos putting a bunch of speed to the right-hand side of that Chicago offense. They've got all their linebackers walked over there. You take a look, here they are. And then you got your big defensive end, Jason Hunter, standing up. So there's that speed front that Chicago's worried about. They're going to slide their protections all the way to that side. 55, 55. Third down and 12 following the penalty. Bears must get to the Denver 49. Haney steps up, dumps it off, and Khalil Bell is tackled at midfield, looks to be just short. 
That's a great individual effort by Khalil Bell to put the Bears in a position to make a decision whether you want to go for it here on fourth and short. He should have been tackled two or three yards short of that marker, but it was his effort that got him close. Bobby Schmidt sending out his punting unit. Adam Podlish. Juan Cosby back deep for the Broncos. Punting from his own 40 in hang time. Fair catch called for at the 15 yard line by Cosby. Tim Tebow and the Broncos offense when we return. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Both teams went three and out on their opening drives. In fact, coming into this game, they were one and two in the lead as far as three and out series this season. Well, this is going to be a big field position game, and you've got that decision maybe to go for it on the fourth and short, but Levy Smith is not going to be aggressive this early in the game. Play the field position game. Make the Broncos drive the length of the field. From the 15-yard line, after Tebow faked the handoff to McGahee, he is brought down back at the 11. Loss of four with Israel Adonije leading the way. Well, this is one of the issues they'll have trying to run the option. Watch the athleticism on the outside. Israel Adonije comes down, reads the dive back, but then has the ability to change direction and get out and impact Tim Tebow with his decision to hold it. Tim Tebow's lucky he didn't pitch it because Brian Erlacher, I think, would have gotten that pitch. I think they've studied this uh, option this week, Darrell? Just a little bit. I think they're dialed <laughs> in on their option rules. Loss of three, now second and 13, as Tebow faked the handoff to Demarius Thomas. Pass is caught by Lance Ball. Ball takes it up to the 22-yard line for a gain of nine. That'll be one of the other challenges, though, Tony, is all that action in the backfield. Some option look, some end-around look, and all of a sudden Tim Tebow pops out. He's got the ball looking to throw it. The Bears are going to play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage to help them with their option responsibilities. So they're going to have to be really, really good, making sure they've got the right man in coverage. Three wide receivers set, third down and four. Tebow downfield intended for Eric Decker. Broken up beautifully by D.J. Moore returning to the Bears lineup today after missing the last three games. And this is the throw that I think Tim Tebow makes really well. Eric Decker's here in the slot. He's going to release up the field on a little bit of a wheel route. But that deep ball, whether it's down the seam in the numbers area or out on the sideline, is the throw that Tim Tebow really executes well. Hester awaiting Colquitt's second punt. Terrific kick by Colquitt, and a fair catch back at the 25-yard line. Caleb Haney of the Bears offense back to work in a moment. Today's game is sponsored by the Ford F-150, the only truck available with EcoBoost. By K Jewelers, every kiss begins with K. And by Nationwide Insurance, Nationwide is on your side. A beautiful Sunday afternoon in Denver, Colorado. And jerseys don't rip very easy right there, but they're patching that one up. Bears start from their own 25-yard line. Marion Barber takes it up the middle. He is brought down by Marcus Thomas. So Barber starting today. Darrow for the injured Matt Forte. And I think we'll see a different style of, of run called here for the Chicago Bears. They'll, they'll use Khalil Bell maybe to get to the outside on the edge. Where, the way we've seen Matt Forte, Mar Marion Barber is going to be inside between the tackles. He's a very, very physical runner. Tries to run you over every time he gets the ball. Six years at Dallas, a pro bowler back in 2007. Second down at five. Hester in motion. Again, it's Barber running hard. Ryan Dawkins drags him down, but not before Barber gains eight more yards on a Bears first down. 
And this is what I mean when I say you may see more of a zone style. You're going to see Marion Barber come in and then just cut right up the field. It's a one cut and go. You're going to challenge this defensive front of the Broncos to move themselves down the line of scrimmage. They're going to run down the line of scrimmage. You're going to get that one cut. And if somebody's not in their gap, Marion Barber is going to be through to the second level. Three wide receivers, new set of downs from the 38-yard line. It's Barber again. Third straight handoff to Barber, and he is cut down by the right corner, Andre Goodman. No gain on the play. Good run support by Andre Goodman right there because you're going to bounce the ball all the way to the outside. If everybody has their gaps controlled, the ball has to bounce all the way outside. You see Roy Williams coming down in on the crack. Now it looks like it's going to be good out on the perimeter, but here comes Andre Goodman, and this is a nice tackle on a big physical runner. Come in low, take his legs out from underneath him. Goodman, the 10-year vet, had a huge pick in the final minutes in Minnesota last week, which set up the game-winning field goal for Denver. Haney down back at the 28-yard line. DJ Williams, his fourth sack of the season, loss of nine. Well, we've got Roberto Garza and Marion Barber talking after the play, so obviously a breakdown in protection. You know, who's got number 55 coming through the gap? And that's a tough job for Marion Barber because when you've got a linebacker coming through the gap and your quarterback is under center, you're asking your running back to do a tough duty to get down there and get in front of him. We usually hard call that. The guard will come down, take that backer coming through the inside gap. The running back adjusts to the defensive tackle. Hester takes the snap. And hands it off to Barber. And the Bears forced a punt for the second time. It was Earl Bennett who took that snap. And then the handoff to Marion Barber. So Adam Podlish out to punt for the second time. So the big play, the sack by D.J. Williams. Remember, Haney was sacked seven times last week by the Chiefs. Yeah, a group that only had 13 sacks all season long coming into the game had seven. Taken at the 14-yard line by Quan Cosby. Out across the 25, a penalty marker at the end of the play. There were two great blocks downfield. By the way, the flag was called. See what the officials are discussing. Carl Cheffers, our referee this afternoon. This is going to be a spot foul, too, so what could have been some relatively good field position out near the 30. It and looks back. like it could be back inside the 10, maybe even the 5. During the return, illegal blindside block, number 57 of the return team. That penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. Timeout. Mario Hagan, the guilty Bronco. No score, first quarter here in Denver. I think John Fox is still saying that he doesn't agree with that call, that it wasn't a penalty, but by rule, when you're moving back towards your own end zone, you cannot blindside block the opponent. Mario Hagan was flagged. Broncos start from the nine-yard line as Tebow hands off to Willis McGahee, who gains just one. We'll go back and take a look at it, and here's Mario Hagan right here, number 57. Now, he's moving towards his own end zone, so that means he can't come and blindside Brian Ewu right there, and he's up around the, the head and neck area again. By rule, that's going to get flagged. Now, you know, five, ten years ago, you know, that's going to be a great block, but with the move towards player safety and the rules that the NFL has put in place, that is now illegal. Second down and nine. Tebow looks downfield. Now throws. The catch is made by Thomas. Good second effort. He picks up a Broncos first down. Finally knocked out of bounds at the 23-yard line by Nick Roach. Gate of 13 for Demarius Thomas. And this was one of the concerns for the Chicago Bears. They don't want Tim Tebow to escape to his left. That's when he's at his most dangerous. As he comes out right here, he finds Demarius Thomas. Now, this effort is phenomenal. Little stick route right here, works back to the quarterback, but the run after the catch, just, just great individual effort by Demarius Thomas. A career game last Sunday for Thomas, four catches, 144 yards. The pitch to McGahee. And he is wrapped up by Henry 
Melton back at the 21 yard line, loss of a yard. Well, dude, the one thing that kills the option goose is team speed. Oh man, I'll tell you what, if you if you watch, he pitches the ball, he's wide open outside, but watch how fast they close. He's gonna go to his left right here. Or his right, our left. Here comes the option. He pitches it. Now he's wide open, but look at these guys running to the ball. Henry Melton just makes a great play. And that's just effort. That's what you get out of the Chicago Bears defense. They're going to run to the ball for four quarters. Second down and 11 off the play fake to Lance Ball. T-Ball moving to his left. Throws it away. Pass was high in the vicinity of both Decker and Thomas. I enjoyed talking to offensive coordinator Mike McCoy for the Denver Broncos and you know he, he knew the challenges of, of creating the offense around Tim Do Tim Tebow and his skill set but you know we, we talked with Rob Chitsinski in Carolina earlier this year and what he was doing with Cam Newton you know a similar situation you've got to work with what you have and it's, it's been fun to watch this offense grow from week to week and he says he steals some stuff on Saturday nights watching the college game play clock winding down Broncos unable to get the snap away in time. Delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, third down. That was funny watching those linebackers up on the line of scrimmage look like they were coming on a blitz. When that clock goes down to 3 2, you know as soon as he yells hot, you get a little bit of a jump. The two linebackers right here, Erlacher. Look at those, look at those signals, huh? Hits with four on, gonna move back. They're down at 16. Tebow with loads of time. Now moves to his left. And five to one downfield. Now he throws. Pace is bobbled and caught for a first down by Matt Willis at the 39-yard line. 14-yard completion. Well, you can have a plan coming into a game, but you still have to execute that plan. And we talked with Julius Peppers. And he said the one thing we can't allow to happen is for Tim Tebow to move to his left. And it's happened three times on this drive. And, and with a guy like Tim Tebow as your quarterback, you've got to continue to move. Look at everybody. Everybody was actually on the opposite side of the field with their route design. And they work all the way to the other side of the field. Find that open window. Get in the line of sight of your quarterback. I'll tell you what, those offensive linemen are doing a great job of staying with their blocks. Give Tim Tebow plenty of time back there. Let's see if the receivers now. Now McGahee on first down out to the 42. Gain of three. Very impressive what Willis McGahee has done and, and what he's really meant to this offense. And, and it was the number one concern of the Chicago Bears. I mean, he's had a great season at this stage of his career. And, and you know, it, I think the wrinkle, the option, what you have to worry about, you know, that you, you start playing it a different way. You're a little bit soft, and then all of a sudden, that offensive line comes off with a big surge, and Willis McGahee's running right at you. On second down off the fake to McGahee. Tebow going deep for Decker. With Charles Tillman on the coverage, there's a flag back at the 30 yard line. Listen to foul. Roughing the passer. Number 55. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Lance Briggs. Yeah, and he's up in the helmet area on Tim Tebow. I don't know. It looked like he pulled off a little bit there, Darrell, didn't he? He's up. He's up. He's straight up right. Maybe they got him for the forearm to the head. That's the only thing I see there. I think they did go helmet to helmet, Tony. Even though it wasn't a real hard hit, I think they still went helmet to helmet. So the Broncos, thanks to the penalty, now in Bears territory for the first time today. Again, he turns the corner. And is forced out of bounds just inside the 40 at the 39 yard line by Tim Jennings, a gain of four. And this is the challenge for Chicago's defense. You're playing against this, this unconventional offense and you're worried about all these different things and Rod Marinelli's group has also got to be ready to just play this traditional style. You know, you've got a quarterback who's unique. You've got some plays that you've worked on all week long. But just remember, this Denver team can run the ball effectively with two backs. Broncos empty the backfield. Jeremiah Johnson split out to the right. 
Tebow on second and six, this time moving to his right. And he overthrows the tight end, Daniel Phelps. Well, that's what you talked about, Darrell. They want to get him moving to his right, not to his left. And if you look at the difference in the ball that was thrown, what well, wasn't even close. Take a look. He's moving to his right. He's got to throw across his body. Doesn't get his feet set. And the ball just floats right over the top. And that's what Julius Peppers told us last night, Goose. We're going to try and force Tebow to move to his right. Empty backfield once again. Third down and six. Tebow steps up now. Back pedals. Moving to his left. Under pressure. And it is picked off. If Charles Tillman was able to get both feet down inbounds. What an unbelievable job by Tillman to keep his feet inbounds and secure the catch. Look at this catch right here. Gets both feet down and feet down. Looks, dips over, makes sure it's and secures the ball. Great job by Tillman. First pick thrown by Tebow in the last six games. 29th career interception for Charles Tillman, his second this year. Tebow had got 103 pass attempts without throwing an interception. Marion Barber on first down out to the 27th gain of three. Well, this is a great job by Charles Tillman working the sideline. You see the elevation to go up and catch the ball, but then to get both feet down like Tony talked about. And, and Matthew Willis, he's got to stay alive on the outside. Jim Tebow wasn't trying to throw that away. He was putting it in an area for him to have the opportunity to go catch it. Two injured Broncos. One is Robert Ayers. We'll be back. Robert Ayers and Brian Dawkins, the injured Denver Broncos. And you're watch number 20 come in, and we always talk about seeing what you hit. And one of the big reasons is not only for your safety, but for your teammate's safety. Brian Dawkins comes in, hits Robert Ayers in the back, so Robert's got a sore back, and Brian's got a stiff neck. Barber out to the 35-yard line. Jason Hunter in for Ayers. Raheem Moore in for... Brian Dawkins, Marion Barber, picks up a Bears first down. Going with the ground game with seven passes, seven rushes, three passes. Here's Barber once again, the eighth Bears run over their first 11 plays. He's brought down by Von Miller after a short game, just one yard on the play as time winds down in this first quarter here in Denver. Von Miller, we talk about him as a pass rusher, but there again, look at him working down the line of scrimmage in the run game, too. An explosive. One hand. Yeah, imagine if he didn't have the club on. This last week's game with the broken right thumb. Excited to be back in the lineup today. Second down and eight. Split backs, three wide receivers. Haney from the shotgun, gets rid of it quickly, and the catch is made by Johnny Knox. But the 13-year vet, Champ Bailey, is right there. Force Knox out of bounds. No gain on the play. You get off coverage like that, you're going to throw that little screen. But look how technically sound Champ Bailey is. As he breaks on the ball, he comes up, he comes to balance, squares up the receiver, drives him out of bounds. That's textbook. Third down at eight. 15 seconds remaining in the corner. Bears must get to the 45 for a first down. They are unable to as Haney's pass is off the hands of Knox. Champ Bailey on the coverage. Working the outside man-to-man -man coverage on the deep in route. He's got his separation right there. And here's Vaughn Miller on the edge working against Lance Lewis who gave up five sacks, five of the seven sacks last week against Minnesota. 
So the Bears cannot capitalize on the Tillman interception. Adam Podlesh punting for the third time this quarter. Taken out the 19 by Cosby. Ten yard return out to the 29. Long snapper Chris Massey made the tackle. So the Broncos and Bears are scoreless after one here in Denver. We start the second quarter in Denver. Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Tony Saragusa, Tim Tebow, and the Broncos go to work from their own 29-yard line. Willis McGahee in the backfield, two tight ends set. Tebow hands it off to McGahee, running to his left. Out to the 32-yard line, gain of three, Erlacher and Corey Wooten. On the tackle. Well, in the last series, you remember Charles Tillman with the interception. There's Tim Tebow over there talking to him about it. And, you know, he, he really was excited about the opportunity to play against this defense with Charles Tillman and Brian Urlacher, Lance Briggs, Julius Peppers. And it's one of the things that I enjoyed meeting him. He has a, he has a passion for the game, the history of the game. And you know, when people are critical of him, he says, you know what, I don't care. I've wanted to be an NFL quarterback since I was seven. I'm living my dream. I don't care what people say. Number 75, Chris Clark in as an extra blocker. As McGahee takes it up the middle, and there is a flag. Illegal formation, offense, five-yard penalty, second down. And one of the things that, that Tim, and he knows that this is true from John Fox, he has to show improvement in the passing game and you can see right here over the last four games you know how he has improved from week to week i like to have a portfolio like that huh Darryl? yeah especially during this economy <laughs> yeah give me 50 shares of tebow <laughs> season high 202 yards last week in minnesota penalty forces the broncos back five yards now second down and 12 as tebow spins and then is taken down the 24-yard line by Julius Peppers. Once again, like we saw in that first series, that defensive line does a really good job of keeping it nice and tight. Watch these guys coming off the line of scrimmage. They're going, they're pressing, there's nowhere for him to run, and then Julius Peppers does a really good job of falling back into the inside and reaching those big arms and playing basketball right around Tim Tebow and wrapping him up. Former starter of North Carolina, Goose Knight sacked this season 98. Of Pepper's career. Third down and 15. Tebow takes off. Needs to get to the 39 yard line. And it will depend on the spot. He's got it. According to the spot. Tebow does pick up a Broncos first down. And an injured Chicago Bear, number 91, Amobi Okoye is down. I mean, it's a breath of fresh air down when you see a quarterback running for a first down and not sliding. Not, not only not sliding, Goose, but lowering his shoulder and taking people on. Exactly. Look at this. What a run. Running people over. Game 16 on third and 15. Today's game is sponsored by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. By the Droid Razor, thin is no longer frail, only at Verizon. And by the 2012 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Back in Denver, there's Amobi Okoye, who was injured on the last play. Julius Peppers with his helmet off on the sidelines. Chris Clark in as an extra blocker for the Broncos. Once again, number 75, the handoff to McGahee. Up the middle for a gain of two after that 16-yard run for a first down by Tim Tebow. And we talked at the top that Tim Tebow has not only generated excitement on the offensive side of the ball, but also the defensive side of all. There's Mario Hagan, ninth year. There's Champ Bailey, 13th year, up on the sideline, you know, watching him lead this offense. Now, I never made it to my 13th year, but I can tell you in my ninth year, I was sitting down on the bench drinking some water in between series. But they want to see what he's going to do. They, they love his competitive spirit. Second and eight, Tebow moving to his left. Now goes the other way. Tries to make something out of nothing. 
Stephen Pyatt makes the tackle as T-Ball got back to the original line of scrimmage. But it was Chauncey Davis who blew up the play, number 94, the defensive end. He's going to see Eric Decker coming across, but they're going to get out on that bootleg. He reads it and gets back upfield, forces Tim Tebow back to the inside. And He's then actually Brian. goes down, makes the tackle. He's got Brian Erlacher running all over the place, driving him crazy. Now third down and eight. Broncos must get to midfield for a first down. Deep oh! to the outside. Chris Conti, the free safety, got a hand on it. Looks like rough in the Personal quarterback. Foul, rough in the passer. Number 71. Defense. Contact to the knee area of the quarterback. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Second personal foul against Lovey Smith's defense. First lands bridge, and now Israel Adonijay. And you can't give them freebies. You know, the, the one thing was we've got to make Denver go the long, hard way. You get down around that quarterback's knees in the pocket, and you're going to get flagged. You are responsible for your body. Even if you turn on a short corner real low and you lose your balance, it's still your responsibility to stay off the quarterback's legs. I know it's the rule, and I know it deserves a flag, but it's not easy to do. When you're a defensive lineman, and you're rushing the quarterback, and you got a guy trying to keep you away. You throw your body, you do whatever it takes to go and get to him, and sometimes you're going to get a flag, and sometimes you aren't. You can't let it affect what you're doing out there. Low snap. The toss to Johnson. Jeremiah Johnson to the 38-yard line, gain of five, as we check in on the Packers and the Raiders with Kurt Menefee. Kurt? The weapons never end for the Packers. This is rookie Ryan Taylor, seventh-round pick out of North Carolina. First NFL catch, first NFL touchdown. Packers up 14-0. Kenny Moose and Goose, 17 different Packers have scored this season. And his first NFL Lambeau lead, Kurt. Packers clinch a first round bye with a win over the Raiders. And the Broncos keeping a close eye on that score. As Spencer Larson, the fullback, takes the handoff from Tebow. Denver tied with Oakland. Identical 7-5 and five records. Atop the AFC West, Raiders trailing 14-0 in Green Bay. What a job John Fox has done this season after a 1-4 start. Outstanding, what he's been able to accomplish. And remember the lockout. I mean, they did not have an opportunity to get together as a staff and players during the course of the offseason. And, and that's why, you know, one of the reasons you're out to a 1-4 start, everything was brand new. Tebow picks up a first down and more on third down and two. Tebow takes it down to the 25-yard line for a gain of nine. Just nice complimentary plays in the run offense here for the Denver Broncos. We saw the quick toss a couple of plays ago. Now you come back and you run that same action. Look at Lance Briggs clear out, vacates that area, gets Zane Beatles up inside on Brian Erlacher, and Tim Tebow jumps in right behind him. Chris Conti finally made the tackle. Julius Peppers back on the field. There's some more of his fans on the sideline standing up watching there, like we talked about earlier. From the 25 on first down, McGahee stays at his feet and leads forward to the 19-yard line. Gain of six, Lance Briggs finally brought him down. And here's an example of when you see this formation, automatically as a bear defender, you've got to think option. You've got shotgun run, two guys in the backfield. But it's not. It, it's power run game from the shotgun. And let me tell you, the shotgun running game is not an easy game. It's very difficult. And one of the things that Denver has been able to do is incorporate a power run game from a shotgun look to complement that little change of pace with their option. Second down and three. Here's McGahee. What makes it so difficult out of the shotgun? I just think when you're doing shotgun run, it, it, you're coming from a stagnant spot. We've seen other teams around the NFL try to do it. When you talk to offensive coaches, it's very, very difficult. Uh, you know, a lot of times your, your offensive linemen are in two-point stances because you're trying to give that pass look. The benefit with the Denver Broncos is they're able to get down in three-point stances because you're worried about option. You're not worried about pass. So it gives them an advantage in their blocking against the front. New set of downs 
for the Broncos. They are in the red zone from the Bears' 15-yard line. Off the fake to McGahee. T-ball to the end zone, overthrows Eric Decker. This one just sailed on, on Tim Tebow here off the play action. You know, Darrell, one thing that really I'm noticing from down here, difference between the first quarter to now, the linebackers for the Chicago Bears, the defensive linemen, they are so unsure if it's a run, if they're power running, if they're option. But right now, they're not attacking the way that we did see earlier in the game. Right now, they're so confused by all the misdirection and all the different plays that, that this uh, Broncos team has that it's slowed them down. And that's one of the things that you have to battle against. I think the Julius Peppers, that was his biggest concern. And you watch it on film, and especially last week when there was really only a couple of option-style plays used against Minnesota. But you have to, con you're concerned about it. it. It impacts the way you're playing. And I agree with you, Tony. Now all of a sudden you're a little bit heavier on your heels. You're worried about moving side to side. I guess it. Yeah. yeah. Third down and six from the Bears 11. Tebow looking for Lance Ball. Incomplete. Henry Melton on the coverage. Broncos will send out the field goal unit. Henry Melton does a nice job here recognizing screen and getting out to make sure this isn't complete. Now here's Julius Peppers on the other side. A, yeah, that should have been a holding call on this one. He just tackles him to the ground. Really surprised that he didn't get this. Take a look at the top of your screen. Peppers comes around the corner. And Ryan Claddy. Whatever he's going to get a tackle for. Here's Matt Prater, who hit two huge field goals in the final minutes in Minnesota last Sunday. One tied the game, and then he won it with no time remaining. Second charge timeout, Denver. So the Broncos take their second timeout. 29 yard attempt when we return. Keep an eye on your play clock right here. And Chris Cooper, your right guard. Now, he's going to be in charge of watching that clock because your, your center can't see it. But he also has to understand the situation. It's a 29-yard field goal. Let the clock run out. We'll kick the 34. Don't burn that timeout. John Fox was not happy. Broncos had used their first timeout earlier. 28-yard attempt. Now, Prater, and it is blocked. Julius Peppers. How many times have we seen that throughout his career? And how many times has John Fox seen it as Peppers coach in Carolina? That's a jump ball. He's one of the more unique athletes in the NFL. Looks like a couple hands got on it. Looked like Adonijay could have had a piece too. Now they got a lot of penetration. Look at that wow. Melton Adonijay. Everybody's up in there. Yeah, I think Peppers and Adonage. I think Israel Adonage got more of that ball. So the Bears take over from their own 20 yard line following the block. And that pass is dropped by Devin Hester. Yeah, there's another example of Caleb Haney not getting a whole lot of help from his supporting cast. And it was real critical last week. You're working from this. You can see the line right there. He's going from the sun into the shade. So we'll, we'll give Devin Hester a hall pass on that one. But it hit him right in the hands. He's got to help out his young quarterback. You could give him the pass. I'm not. He's got to make that catch. The hall pass for Moose, but not Goose. Second and ten. The toss to Marion Barber. Barber takes it out to the 28-yard line. Eight of eight before he was finally brought down by D.J. Williams. And this is uh, a play that's a staple of the Bears running game when you've got Matt Forte in there. And, and that's good execution right there with Marion Barber. That's not his strength as a running back. But that was a good job getting out on the perimeter, getting some big yards. Is it because he's not as patient now as a running back? Because yeah, I think it like is. When he hits that line of scrimmage, he wants to go. And on that particular play, when you got to get to the outside, you got to be patient and wait for your blocks to be set up, correct? Right? He's a downhill runner, Goose. Okay. Penalty markers prior to the snap. Start, number 60, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. 
Second false start of the game by the right side of the Bears offensive line. Well, you got number 58 lined up outside yet, and everybody all week long has told you about how explosive he is off the line of scrimmage. Good to see both Brian Dawkins and Robert Ayers back in for the Broncos. Both shaken up earlier. Now third down and seven following the penalty. Bears must get to the 30 for a first down. Haney under pressure. Down he goes. Back at the 14-yard line. Again, it is D.J. Williams, his second sack today. Well, the reason you're going to get a sack is because you've got good coverage downfield by the Broncos. Good switch right there between Champ Bailey and Chris Harris in that man-to-man -man situation. Earl Bennett coming across. Brian Dawkins, a good job finding his way through the maze of players. And now you're so worried about Vaughn Miller, you're going to free up D.J. Williams into some one-on-one -on -one situations, and he's got two sacks already. Fourth Bears possession, fourth Bears punt. Taken at the 33 by Quan Cosby. Cosby out to the 41-yard line, eight on the return, following the 52-yard punt. Terrific field position for Tebow and the Broncos, following the sack by D.J. Williams. Today's game is sponsored by Visa. More fans go with Visa. Back in Denver, still scoreless. Best starting field position of the day for the Broncos. Split backs, Ball, and Johnson. Off the fake to Ball. Debo's pass intended for Eric Decker. Another pass that should have been caught right there. Absolutely. A, a chance to make a, a good play on the outside. Yeah, you talked about it earlier about T Tim Tebow makes a great throw to the outside like this. Right where he needs to be. Inside the playing field right there. He just needs to bring that in there. Beautiful. Absolutely. Now in second and ten, it's McGee. Up the middle, out to the 46. Eight of four, he got a J to tackle. And that's one of the things that we really have to talk about with this offense, Tony, you know, is the guys like Eric Decker, Demarius Thomas, Matthew Willis, you know, the wide receivers in this offense, what they do for the run game, you know, whether it's the option or, or right there, you know, you're, you're running into basically nine-man fronts because you're motioning in wide receivers and asking them to go inside and dig people out of the box. I mean, they, they, they came to the NFL hoping to be running down the sideline catching long passes. This is a very, very unselfish, unselfish offensive group. Third down and six. Tebow takes off. Brian Erlacher makes a terrific tackle. Tebow looks to be just short. His knee hit down before he extended. Brian Erlacher looked like he drops in the coverage, but his eyes never come off of Tim Tebow. He's right in front of him. He squares him up and makes a great tackle to stop that first down. And again, you can see how important field position is in this game. This is the second opportunity for each of these teams in a fourth and short situation, almost identical field position, both teams electing to punt. Paul Clinton punted for the third time. Has to move into his right. Fair catch and a flag. <laughs> During the kick, holding number 33 of the return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down Chicago, timeout. Charles Tillman. Tillman. Hands to the face and a little holding. Still no score here in Denver. Late second quarter. Kenny Albert with Daryl Johnston. It's been a field position battle 
so far and now the Bears backed up at their own five yard line it really has and the big player has been penalties Chicago had some untimely penalties two personal fouls already with hits on Tim Tebow to help them out the big play of the first half so far the blocked field goal attempt by Julius Peppers Khalil Bell bottled up by Vaughn Miller I'll tell you what Vaughn Miller we're talking about athleticism he makes the tackle Watch him come through the line of scrimmage here. He makes the tackle with one hand. He gets up. Bing! The front flip. You ever try that celebration, Goose? No, I'd, I'd be on a stretcher if I ever did something like that, guys. Tell you what, that flip got the stadium rolling, though. Second down and ten. It's Bell again. And this time, he'll do the celebrating as he picks up a Bears first down gain of 12 out to the 17. Now you gotta love this this is just like a smash mouth football game both teams running the ball trying to pound it right down your throat nothing crazy these runners all leaning forward full head of steam definitely old school style that is old school under three minutes remaining second quarter from the 17, it's Khalil Bell. Bell out across the 20. Gain of four. Bell in his third season out of UCLA. Congratulations to our colleague at Fox, new head coach of the UCLA Bruins, Jim Mora. Congratulations, coach. Our director, Mike Frank, a graduate of uh, UCLA, very happy with the decision. He wishes he still had his eligibility. There's Matt Forte. 60 consecutive games since the start of his career until today. A huge loss for, for this Bears offense. On, on, even if Jay Cutler's still out there, Matt Forte is so key to this offense. Second and seven. The slant is caught and taken for a first down by Khalil Bell out to the 33-yard line as we hit the two-minute warning. 13-yard pass play. Bears are on the move. They started this drive at their own five, scoreless in Denver. Brian Dawkins has gone into the locker room, so still uh, some lingering effects from that hit he took in the first quarter. Placed by the rookie out of UCLA, Raheem Moore. First and ten from the 33-yard line. Heaney to the near side of the catcher's made for another Bears first down by Johnny Knox in Broncos territory, 19-yard pass play. One of the things you see about Caleb Haney is, is he's really a rhythm guy. I mean, once the plays start happening, you know, he's he starts to build off that momentum. But, you know, we talked about it at the top. You know, he even stressed we've got to have more of a sense of urgency to start this game. They did not. But this is one thing that he's done. Late second quarter, fourth quarter. He's always seems to find his rhythm at that point. Bears had only two first downs prior to this drive. They have three on this possession, which started back at the five. As Haney swings it out to Bell, but D.J. Williams right there to make the tackle. Got to make a better read. Caleb's got to see D.J. Williams in man-to-man -man coverage on that throw. Loss of four yards on the play. Bears have all three of their timeouts. A minute and a half. There's the former Bronco, Jay Cutler, missing his third consecutive game. Underwent surgery. Here in Colorado two weeks ago, had his stitches removed this week and was throwing on the field prior to the game today. And in this offense, it really hit its stride with Jay Cutler there. They were putting up some points on consecutive games before that injury. They won five in a row with Cutler. Second and 14. Haney is tackled by Elvis Dumerville at the 49-yard line after gaining two. It's one of the things when you can bring pressure from both edges and we talk about Von Miller at the top number 58 But then you've got Elvis Dumerville on the bottom even even double team You know you're trying to give a little chip there as Kellen Davis releases But he's one of those guys. He's relentless with his pass rush Bears finally use their first time out third down and 13 upcoming for Chicago for a preview of the visa halftime report to Los Angeles Here's Kurt all right, coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, we'll have scores and highlights from what has already been a crazy Week 14 in the NFL, including Tom Brady having words with his offensive coordinator on the sideline. And Green Bay tries to keep perfect. That's all coming up on the Visa Halftime.
Boy, how relaxed are the other guys look with their feet up on the desk? <laughs> Bears facing a third down and 13. They were 0 for 11 in their loss to the Chiefs last week. 0 for 4 so far today. Chicago must get to the Denver 38. Haney out of the shotgun. Fires downfield and it is nearly picked off by Chris Harris. This is a very, very well designed defensive scheme right here DJ Williams is out here on the left you think pressure watch him peel off and pick up Khalil Bell I think that Caleb Haney thought he was going to have a clean back into the flash so now he's got to adjust and go downfield almost throws the interception to Chris Harris in case Bear fans are wondering that is not the Chris Harris who played for Chicago earlier this season he is now in Detroit this Chris Harris is a rookie out of Kansas Podlesh punting for the fifth time. And it will take a Broncos bounce into the end zone. So Denver with one timeout, 37 seconds on the clock, will start above their own 20. This January, Fox returns to the Octagon with an incredible UFC Fight Night triple header. Some of the UFC's best fighters will battle for a shot at the title. Headlined by former light heavyweight champ Rashad Evans and undefeated Phil Davis. Plus two explosive middleweight bouts. The UFC Fight Not on Fox triple header will be live from Chicago. Saturday, January 28th at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Right here on Fox. Tebow with 45 yards in the air, 27 on the ground. One timeout, 37 seconds remaining. And the scoreless first half. This is Lance Ball. And Ball picks up a first down out across the 32-yard line. And the Broncos will use their final timeout. Remember, they took their second on that field goal attempt. And then the field goal was blocked moments later. Well, when you're sitting at 0-0, you've got to have some good defensive plays. And, and here's our play of the first half. Uh, we had three Bears push the center of that pile. You had Henry Melton, Israel Adonaje, and Julius Peppers all push that center area and block the field goal attempt of the Denver Broncos to keep us scoreless. There has been one NFL game this season that was scoreless at the half. Giants and Patriots back on November 6th. And then they exploded in the second half. Giants won the game 24-20, but they were scoreless at halftime. Good time, good halftime adjustments by the Giants and the Patriots in that one. So the Broncos with no timeouts, 29 seconds remaining. Here's Tebow on first down, and that pass is dropped by Thomas. We saw Decker drop one earlier, and now Demarius Thomas unable to hang on. When you have teams in these situations, you talk about the margin for error, and it's small on both sides right here. You know, these guys have to start stepping up and making the plays. Demarius Thomas has to make this catch. You come out in a two-minute situation, you know, at the end of the first half, you have a good first play. Now, all of a sudden, you change what you were going to do. And, you know, now you want to be aggressive. Demarius Thomas drops a nice, easy catch there. Second down and 10. T-ball with a rainbow pass. And that one sails over the head of Thomas with Tim Jennings on the coverage. Broncos have won their last five, six of seven. There's Rod Marinelli, the defensive coordinator for the Bears. And Green Bay has now extended their lead over Oakland to 24 0. So that is more good news for the Broncos. Seven straight incompletions for T-Ball. They keep it on the ground. And will be able to run out the clock as Jeremiah Johnson. Picks up a Denver first down. An incomplete pass, and they would have punted back to Hester. Broncos quickly up to the line. How many times do we see situational football at the end of the half or the, the end of the, end of the game? Half. Yeah, a missed opportunity right there. You've got to know in the huddle, listen, we're going to call a running play because we want to make sure at least the clock goes out. We don't have to punt the ball to Devin Hester on an incomplete. But when you hit that big play, everything changes, and nobody was on board. Scoreless. Here in Denver, Visa Halftime Report is next.
The Broncos and Bears are scoreless as we get set for the third quarter. Darrell, the first half numbers. One of the big players in that first half were the penalties uh, by Chicago. The 45 yards had a couple of personal fouls with hits on the quarterback. That was really the big thing. Julius Pepper is really the play of the first half with the blocked field goal by the Broncos. Keep this at 0-0. Zero, zero. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Remember the Bears won the opening toss. They deferred. So Chicago will receive the second half kickoff. Johnny Knox back deep for the Bears. Matt Prater, who had that 28-yard field goal attempt blocked, sends this one through the back of the end zone. So Caleb Haney and the Bears offense will start from their own 20-yard line. An offense now that has not scored a touchdown now in six full quarters. And uh, the, the third down problems continue. 0 for 11 last week against Kansas City. 0 for 5 in the first half today against the Denver Broncos. But we have seen some resurgence in some of the other areas. Special teams with the big block. But uh, I, I agree with the guys at the halftime show. This is turning into a Tim Tebow style of game. It's going to be tight down to the end. And he's done so well in those types of games so far this season. Broncos have won their last five. Over the last three, they trailed in the fourth quarter and came back to win. This game is scoreless as Marion Barber is tackled by D.J. Williams, who had a tremendous first half. His head coach, John Sp uh, Fox, spoke with Goose moments ago. Tony? Well, when I talked to John coming out, uh, he was uh, really mad about He thought that they had one second left and they could have took, uh, took a shot at uh, maybe kicking a field goal. One thing he said, he says, we had our opportunities you know, but we dropped the ball. We got to get in field goal range. We got to get some points on the board, and we got to we got to go and execute. Would have been a record-setting field goal, and that is not reviewable. Officials deem that the half came to an end. Pass off the hands of Marion Barber. Third down and 11 upcoming for Chicago. Ken Kenny also uh, Brian Dawkins with a neck. He's very questionable for coming back. One of the things that, that Caleb Haney wanted to get better at this week, and he told everybody that he would be better, was his his feel in the pocket. And he's got a little bit of pressure there, but he steps up. He's got to be able to deliver that throw to Marion Barber. It uh, makes it so much easier. You're going to be third and short probably in that situation. Now you're third and 10 plus. Three wide receivers set. Bears must get to the 30 for a first down, and the play is blown dead once again lance lewis right tackle sees all those guys in the line of scrimmage Full start number 60 offense five-yard penalty third down he's so worried about getting his kick back to get in position to go and block the guy in front of him that uh you know he sees all those guys on the line of scrimmage watch right here and he just leaves early see how he kicks back real early worried about von miller his second false start today and Darrell, as you mentioned earlier, he allowed five of the seven sacks last week against the Chiefs. Third down and 16 following the penalty. Haney steps up and throws. Pass intended for Johnny Knox, and there is another flag. Illegal use of hands. Hands to the face, number 73. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Left tackle, Jamarcus Webb. John Fox declines the penalty. Bears will punt. Just can't get any type of momentum going here. And you're going to get some help on the outside. Marion Barber, as he releases, is going to give a little chip on Vaughn Miller. Better job by Caleb that time. You know, step, shuffle up, step up in that pocket, reset your feet. Six Chicago possessions today. This will be punt number six. Out of Podlesh from his own four-yard line. Taken at the 32 by Cosby. Brian Cosby out to the 44. 12 yards on the return. The injured Bronco is David Bruton. Good field position for Tim Tebow and the Broncos. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By the all-new Volkswagen Passat 2012 Motor Trend Car of the Year. By Rise of the Planet of the Apes on Blu-ray and DVD in two days. And by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Best starting field position for the Broncos today. 
from their own 45-yard line. As Tebow hands it off to McGahee. And Willis McGahee is wrapped up. No gain on the play. Tebow just 3 of 13 in the air in the first half. In fact, his last eight passes have been incomplete. Yeah, but neither one of these quarterbacks got a whole lot of help. We had a lot of drops in that first half, especially near the end. So again, you know, when, when you're a young quarterback making your way in the league, you need help from your supporting cast. And uh, a little bit let down for both the quarterbacks in the first half. On second and 10, Tebow going deep for Thomas through his hands. There's another example right there. Marius Thomas has got to make that catch. That's exactly what John Fox was talking about going into halftime. Here's all the things that you got to worry about. Reed keep out to the backside, all that play action. You sneak the Marius Thomas over the top. Tim Tebow throws a nice ball into the middle of the field. Just doesn't finish the play. Thomas in his second season out of Georgia Tech, selected 22nd overall, three picks before the Broncos chose Tebow. And with the play clock at two, Broncos forced to burn an early timeout here in the second half. Couldn't get the formation set the right way. Another early timeout used here again in the second half. Through the hands of Thomas, we remain scoreless. Demarius Thomas, two touchdown receptions for the Broncos last week against Minnesota. Nearly scored the first points of this game moments ago. Another missed opportunity. You only get so many in a game. So now third down and 10 following the timeout for Tim Tebow on the Broncos. They must get to the Bears 45 for a first down. Tebow moving to his left. He throws and the pass is incomplete intended for Matt Willis. Well they loaded up the defensive left side. There is a flag and brought the pressure. Illegal formation offense, only six players on the line of scrimmage. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. So Tebow now 0 for his last 10. Broncos will punt. There's that pressure from the defensive left side. And again, the one thing it does, you get to Tim Tebow, but you flush him out to his left, which is one thing they didn't want to do this afternoon. Devin Hester away to the punt from Colquitt. Last time these teams met back in 2007. In the third quarter, Hester returned both a punt and a kickoff for a touchdown. And over end, fair catch called for at the 19-yard line. Well, this February, NASCAR's best will converge at Daytona International Speedway for NASCAR's biggest race as defending Sprint Cup Series champion Tony Stewart and rookie Danica Patrick highlight a full field of drivers looking to take home auto racing's ultimate prize. Fox Sports is proud to bring you exclusive coverage of the Great American Race, the 54th running of the Daytona 500 on February 26th. Sun goes down here. It's a little chilly out. See our guys up on the cameras right there. Although a lot warmer than you would expect. In Denver in December, Bruce. Absolutely, absolutely. From the 19-yard line on first down, Khalil Bell. Bell takes it all the way out to the 32 for a gain of 13. And I think what Chicago has to do right now, just based on what we saw in the first half, I think Khalil Bell needs to be the featured back here in the second half. He's running a little bit better than Marion Barber right now. He's effective in the passing game, so I would use Marion Barber as my changeup and allow Khalil Bell to get the majority of the carries. There's Barber. New set of downs for the Bears. It's Bell again. Bell made his debut against Philadelphia back in November of 2009. On his first NFL carry, ran for 72 yards. Did not get into a game last season. Seeing extensive action today in the absence of Matt Forte. And that's a big loss. Matt Forte is such a huge part of this offense. So not only obviously the leading rusher, but also the leading receiver by a substantial margin here for the Chicago Bears. And he leads the entire league in yards from scrimmage. 
Second down and eight. Haney in trouble. Vaughn Miller. Again, it's that feel in the pocket. You've got to develop that feel in the pocket as a young quarterback. This is, needs to come out quicker. You're going to drop back. Ball needs to come out quick. When it doesn't come out quick, the athleticism, Lance Lewis, if you're going to go down and you're going to chop Vaughn Miller, you better make sure you get him on the ground. And 11 that, and a half sacks as a rookie. He won the Butkus Award last year, top linebacker in the nation. Who presented him the award in person on the Texas A&M campus? The former great Chicago Bear, Dick Butkus himself. Bears used their first timeout. Following the sack by Miller, who wears number 58 in tribute to one of his favorite players to watch on film, the late Derek Thomas. Yeah, I mean, here's a guy who wore number 40 his entire career, you know, in high school and then on to uh, Texas A&M. But you know, his coach at A&M was Joe Kynes, and Joe Kynes actually coached Derek Thomas back at Alabama in the late 80s with Cornelius Bennett and Keith McCants and that great linebacker group. And he would tell Vaughn, you know, got that rare gift of, of that first step and I haven't seen it since Derek Thomas and actually Brian Dawkins talking with us on Friday mentioned the same thing so in tribute to Derek Thomas Von Miller for the first time in his football career wearing a number different than number 40 chose 58. Third down at 15 following the sack by Miller. Haney looks to take off chased by Williams and D.J. Williams, who's had a tremendous game, makes the tackle at the 35-yard line. So Haney gains eight. Bears send out the punting unit. D.J. Williams has had an outstanding game. He's really been everywhere, you know, whether he's been in coverage, pressuring the pass, you can see right there. It's a great adjustment on his part. He's got Khalil Bell in coverage. But, you know, be a football player. Keep your eyes off the field. Find that quarterback. Who's got the ball? Understand when you can leave your coverage and go make a play. Starting to sound like a broken record. Seven Bears possessions, seven punts. Looking to his left. Cosby picks it up on the bounce. And is hit hard at the 13-yard line by Patrick Trahan. Well, Caleb Haney told us if a possession ends with a kick, it's a good possession. But I think he meant a PAT at some point. Or a field goal. Or a field goal. <laughs> John Elway, the Broncos executive vice president of football operations. Yeah, and he uh, he is he has been outspoken about the quarterback spot here with Tim Tebow. But I, I you know I think he's watching the progression. I think that you know early on he saw the way the position was being played and he challenged him. You know we need better production from the quarterback spot. Off the play fake to McGay, Tebow. And it's just that one time that you give up your responsibility, Goose. I'll tell you what, if you just watch him, his eyes are always on the opposing team. Watch, he sees the ball, boom, he knows, I'm going to pull it out. There's nobody outside of Julius Peppers right now. I'm going to go and run for some yardage. Yeah, I had a hard time following the ball, and I thought, well, yeah, he yeah. had. So did Julius Peppers. Yeah. Good thing you're not doing play by play. Yeah. has it again. And he says, no way. Got me the first time, kid. <laughs> Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame, Shame on, on me. me. That, that, he wasn't going to have that one happen this time. Watch him right here. He goes, he looks down, and, and, <laughs> but he keeps, he stays square to the line of scrimmage so he can come back out. It's but, a nice job of stripping the ball, too. But you know, Goose, it's one of the things that, that most people that. can't do that, right? You know, you don't have a Julius Peppers on no. every team. No. I mean, he, he and Israel Adonaji, Israel in the first half, were doing a very, very effective job of being able to move down the line of scrimmage in those situations. On third down and one, it's McGahee. And he is tackled by Lance Briggs. Looks to be just short. Good play by Lance Briggs right there. Boy, I mean, you, you get almost nine yards on first down, and then you force this team to punt. That's impressive. So at the bottom of that pile, Lance Briggs goes, wraps up his legs so he can't go and, and stretch out to get that first down. 
So far today, Hester with four fair catches on punch from Colquitt. Angle towards the sideline, taken at the 32, and a chance to run for Hester, but he is forced back, stays on his feet. Wow. Has blockers. He is across midfield and finally tackled by Spencer Larson. We talked about it earlier, Darrell. Kicking the ball at Devin Hester. It's like playing Russian roulette. You never know when he's going to go and have that opportunity to break that 30, 40, maybe even a touchdown. Here it is right here. Uh, he's, they've got him pinned in. I mean, this is unbelievable. Look at this. They've got five, six guys right there. Now when he breaks right here, now you're just holding your breath. I tell you, Quentin Carter does a great job right there. He's out in open field, and he feathered it, feathers it, plays it soft, slows him down a little bit, doesn't allow him to get that lane straight to the end zone. 26-yard return by Hester. From the Broncos, 42, the handoff to Marion Barber. And Barber takes it down to the 37 for a gain of five on first down. Get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call star star NFL now. We are scoreless here in Denver. There have been 514 points scored around the league this weekend, Thursday night and today. None so far in this game. I think we had a feeling of that. Bears have not scored a touchdown since the fourth quarter at Oakland two weeks ago. Fell to three points last week. Nothing so far today. Barber, first down and more. Marion Barber finally tripped up at the 20. Game 17, we check in for a game break with Kurt. The San Francisco 49ers have already clinched the West. They're trying to get that number two seed locked up. Frank Gore, the franchise's all-time leading rusher, will help that out with a 37-yard touchdown, and they extend their lead over the Cardinals 19-7 in the third quarter. Kenny Moose and Goose. Thanks, Kurt. 49ers hoping to raise their record to 11-2. Deepest penetration today for Chicago from the 20. It's Barber. Leads forward to the 16-yard line, gain of four. Andre Goodman made the tackle. Ryan, Ryan Dawkins, Dawkins on the sideline. Tony talked about him being very questionable for coming back. Got that pinched nerve in the first half. And now Andre, Andre Goodman going down. Yeah, Goodman shaking up. I tell you what, Marion Barber is, is showing me why I'm not a football coach. I thought Khalil Bell should have been the running back here in the second half, and it's been all Marion Barber on this drive. For Andre Goodman, that's like running into a brick wall. Nice job by Marion Barber being able to get down and take on that contact. And then it looked like Goodman took a knee to the helmet from his teammate, Ryan McBean, at the end of the play. Yeah, that's why I think he got hurt, because he wasn't expecting to get hit again. You see that a lot. So Dawkins, the 16-year vet on the sidelines. Goodman, 10 seasons in the league. Will head off. Broncos with three of the six oldest starting defensive backs in the league, and two of them are not on the field. There's your last remaining, Champ Bailey, still playing at a very high level at this stage of his career in the secondary. Goodman replaced by Chris Harris. He's matched up with Roy Williams. Second down and seven. First trip into the red zone for the Bears today. Haney's pass is caught by Bell. Leo Bell takes it down to the 11-yard line, gain of six. Talked about Champ Bailey, open field tackle, does a great job on that play. Getting the runner down. I like Caleb Haney's decision on that. You're on the boot and you come out. If the short guy is open, take him right away. Take those positive yards. Don't wait for Kellen Davis to pop open down the field because they might cover up Khalil Bell during that time. Barber in the backfield, third down and one. Here's Barber, and he will pick up a Bears first down at the Broncos nine-yard line. Marcus Thomas had a shot of tackling him back in the backfield. So you're not going to go and arm tackle Marion Barber when he's down going downhill. Uh, now we're seeing the Bears play that complimentary style of football, and it, it's all feeding off of the big punt return 
by Devin Hester. You come out, Marion Barber gives you a couple of big runs, and here you are, first down at the nine-yard line, first and goal. And that was the first third down converted by the Bears today after going 0 for 11 last week. Here's Barber, cuts to his left, breaks a tackle, he's in! Touchdown, Marion Barber! All right, now this is a style of run that I didn't think Marion Barber was capable of. This is great feet. And I think of him as a very physical downhill runner. Watch the feet on Marion Barber on this run. There's your little jump cut. Great vision. Strength to break the tackle. That is an excellent run by Marion Barber. Ran right through Raheem Moore on that play. He is not a cutback runner. No. He's not coming out the back door very often. We talk about field position after that nine-yard run by T-Ball on first down. Broncos unable to pick up the first. They punt it away. 25-yard return by Hester. And the Bears capitalize. Chicago with a 7-0 lead. Marion Barber, nine-yard touchdown run. Brian Dawkins on the Broncos sideline chatting with his replacement, Raheem Moore. I don't think he was chatting with him, Kenny. No. I, I don't think he was very happy with the way that his guys in the secondary performed on that touchdown run. Quinton Carter had Marion Barber dead to rights at the line of scrimmage for no gain, and it was a poor tackle, head down. Yeah, fundamentals. Not a friendly chat. Not a friendly chat at all. Okay. Encouraging, you know, challenging, but not friendly. Now to look at Hester, who returned that punt 25 yards, setting up the Bears in terrific field position. Marion Barber giving Chicago a 7-0 lead. First points here at Denver today. Well, do the Broncos have the Bears right where they want them? Absolutely. We're moving into the fourth quarter. It's a one-possession game. Tim Tebow's at quarterback. It's about ready to get excited. Yes, it's getting ready to go. Ten straight incompletions, as you saw. Tebow just 3 of 15 so far. As he goes to the far sideline, intended for Eric Decker. Well, that's been one of the issues today. Now, this is going to be a good catch by Eric Decker if he's able to pull this in. Watch number 87 on the release up the field. Breaking to the outside on Tim Jennings. Tangled up in the feet probably did more than anything to prevent that catch. Second and ten from the 20-yard line. Bears lead the Broncos 7-0. As McGee runs it to a wall with Matt Tolina leading the way. Well, we had that last one by Eric Decker. It would have been a tough catch, but we've had some other ones today that were a little bit easier. That's one by Eric Decker early in the first half. Demarius Thomas, the end of the first half, when maybe they were going to jump into a, a two-minute hurry-up. And then right here, to the opening series of the third quarter, Demarius Thomas has one go through his hands. Looked like a touchdown if he can bring that one in. Would have been an 89-yard Touchdown for Thomas. T-ball down at the 26. Broncos will punt. Brian Erlacher once again in the middle of the field. Tim Tebow just can't get away from him. He sees an open space to his right-hand side. You'll see it right here. I'm going to run right here. Watch. Brian Erlacher. I mean, you're going you're to go and shake and big a couple guys, but very rarely will you get Brian Erlacher. Third consecutive three and out of this third quarter for the Broncos offense. Hester waiting back at his own 30. Takes it out to 27. They got him pinned in again. Goes all the way across the field. It's a nine-yard return as he went sideline to sideline. 47-yard punt. Time for a game break with Kurt. Well, Denver fans want to keep an eye on the AFC West. San Diego, Philip Rivers, uh, I don't think that time was drawn up. Ball just comes out. Brian Scott lands on it for the touchdown. San Diego does lead it, though, 16-10 in the third quarter. Kenny Moose and Goose in the other game of import. Green Bay all over Oakland, 31-0 at halftime. All right, thanks, Kurt. Broncos and Raiders, both 7-5. San Diego. As Kurt mentioned, leading Buffalo, looking to raise their record to 6-7. and seven. 
As Haney hands it off to Barber, who scored the Bears' touchdown moments ago. And Marion Barber gains eight. Now to the 45-yard line. Congratulations to the Houston Texans in their first division championship heading to the playoffs for the first time. Yeah, and then we see a little flip-flop with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens coming into the game today. The Ravens having beaten the Steelers both times. If they're tied, they own the tiebreaker. And the New York Jets with a big win, 37-10 over Kansas City. On second and two, here's Barber. And it is Marcus Thomas who holds Barber to no game. A lot of push this time. We've, we've seen this Chicago offensive line create some running lanes. The last few running plays for Marion Barber, but that time the Broncos defensive line pushing everybody back, filling all those gaps. Quentin Carter also did a nice job of taking two, going down low and not let them line to get up on that second level. Four wide receivers for the Bears. Now they empty the backfield. Third down and two. As Haney throws, and Roy Williams able to make the catch. His first reception today for 17 yards, and Williams signals first down. And here's a guy with a big drop last week on the outside. Watch this catch. And he grabbed the back half of the football on that one and pulled it in. It's been one of those games where you're kind of sitting around waiting for somebody to make a play. You wonder if that was the play right there for the Chicago Bears. Big catch on third down by Roy Williams. Under two minutes remaining, third quarter off the fake toss. Haney connects with Hester. A stiff arm by Devin Hester for the face of Champ Bailey, and a flag is thrown. Bailey was looking for the flag. If you're going to go and use that stiff arm, you can't go and grab the face mask, and I think that's exactly what Devin Hester does right here. See Champ Bailey right on him. You can't twist it and move it, Goose. You can get your hand on Personal it. Personal foul, face mask, number 23, offense, 15 yard penalty, repeat, first down. It was almost right after the play when they were out of bounds. He hooked the bottom of the face mask with his finger right here. You see his finger wrapped around and doesn't let go. There's the face mask right there. You know why that was able to happen, Goose? I mean, Champ Bailey, how many times have we seen him in run support come up and just make textbook tackles? He puts himself in such great position. You see some guys in that situation come up and just dive at the guy's legs, try to take the legs out. Now he comes up and fits everybody up. Very impressed with him with his tackling today. It's the third personal foul committed by the Bears, and now Haney uses Chicago's second timeout. Go back and take a look at the key plays of the game up until this point. The big one in the first half. I mean, you got three of the big guys coming through the center on a Broncos field goal attempt. Demarius Thomas, the opening series for the Denver Broncos here in the third quarter. It's going to be a tough catch, but you make that catch, you've got a touchdown. It's one of those games that's hanging in the balance, waiting for somebody to make that critical play that shifts momentum to their side. And then we just saw a play right there. Personal foul on Devin Hester for 15. You know, could have taken him out of field goal range. Now first down and 24. Bears empty the backfield once again. Bell split out to the left. Haney wrapped up back at the 42-yard line by Elvis Doomerville. The fourth Denver sack today. Elvis Doomerville is going to be able to take advantage of the fact that everybody gets focused on Vaughn Miller. Now, Jamarcus Webb has gone up against some good defensive ends, but he's having some issues today with Elvis Doomerville. Doomerville, two seasons ago, led the NFL with 17 sacks. Now second down at 29. Khalil Bell. Up to the 45-yard line. Time winding down to this third quarter. Marion Barber with a nine-yard touchdown run to give Chicago the lead. 
Remember the last three weeks, the Broncos trailed in the fourth quarter, came back to win all three games. Tim Tebow has done it five times over his first 10 NFL starts. Haney on third and 27, the screen to Barber. And Marion Barber down the sideline. Needed to get to the 38-yard line for a first down. And he is stopped one yard short on the initial spot. That's the original line of scrimmage, Kenny, before the penalty. Actually needs to get down to the 28. Right. With the clock running to the end of the third quarter. So Barber knocked out 11 yards shy. Bears will punt. When we come back, they take a 7-0 lead into the fourth quarter here in Denver. As we start the fourth quarter, Levy Smith does not send out the punting unit. It is Robbie Gold who will attempt a 57-yard field goal. This has been a game of field position so far. A little surprising. You get a 58-yarder during pregame warm-ups. His career long is 54 from the left hash. Robbie Gold from 57 yards out. The kick is good. And that is a new Chicago Bears franchise record. A 57-yard field goal by Robbie Gold on the first play of the fourth quarter. 10-0 Chicago. Today's game is sponsored by Nissan. Innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation for all. By Nationwide Insurance. Nationwide is on your side. And by Sprint. All football, no limits. Only from Sprint. Bears now lead the Broncos 10-0. Here in Denver, Bears now will play their first game in 1920. That was the longest field goal in franchise history. Kevin Butler hit... 55 yarder twice Bob Thomas as well back in 1975 here in Denver Robbie gold from 57 yards out he had some more uh, yards after that Kenny. that yeah. was gonna be good from a long way that would have been good from about 65 he hit the net so Tim Tebow and the Broncos trail 10 nothing it has been well documented Fourth quarter comebacks by Denver each of the last three weeks. Five times in Tebow's 10 career starts. And how about his numbers in the fourth quarter this season compared to the first three? When the game is on the line, when it's hanging in the balance, he plays his best football of the day. The Broncos trail by 10 following that field goal. Demarius Thomas. Took the toss from Tebow and gains five out to the 25-yard line. Very impressed by the Chicago defense this afternoon. They have done a great job. They have a lot of different things thrown at them. They've done a good job of, of just st slowing down the power running game of the Denver Broncos. But when we have seen some kind of trick play or a gadget play in the run game, they have been really good with their assignments. Israel, Adonaje, a loss of a yard. You give this group a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter, this, this is going to be a tough challenge for Tim Tebow in this Broncos offense. Tim Tebow, who has completed only three passes today, he is 0 for his last 11. He's been played by some drops, but just 3 for 16, 45 yards, and a pick. Third down at five. Tebow backpedaling. Being chased, and he's forced out of bounds at the 27-yard line by Craig Stelts. And the Broncos, for the fourth consecutive time in this second half, will go three and out. Craig Stelts just does a nice job here of being down in front. As soon as he sees him break contain, comes off of his guy. He's been one of the key guys. You know, Craig Stells and Chris Conti have been big players today when you talk about all the different things they've had to face in this running game. Being the alley guy that fills on the option. You know, kind of give him a little spy 
style right there on Tim Tebow in that situation. Colquitt punting for the seventh time today. Nearly blocked by Trahan. Fair catch. Hester back at the 20-yard line. Two minutes in, fourth quarter with the Bears leading by 10. Fox Tuesday, TV's best new comedy just keeps getting better. The smash hit New Girl, starring Zoe Bastionelle, has its first Christmas together, and Jess is going to receive the biggest surprise of the season. Don't miss the comedy being held as the critics' new crush catch an auto episode of New Girl this Tuesday after Glee on Fox. The Chicago Bears with a 10-point lead. And Caleb Haney's third start for the injured Jake Cutler. Haney hands it off to Marion Barber, takes it out to the 26-yard line, gain of five. Joe Mays on the tackle. And Marion Barber has been a difference maker here in the second half. And uh, I, I felt that maybe Khalil Bell was the better option here. He had played well in the first half. You saw him in the passing game, had some, some good runs, but Marion Barber has come out here in the second half and, and really just been very impressive running the football for the Bears. Barber with 94 yards on the ground, averaging over five yards per carry. This time he looks to spin away from Broderick Bunkley, and then he is forced back by Von Miller. There's your penetration, Goose, that shuts down is. those running plays. Broderick Bunkley gets into the backfield really quickly. Number 77, I think he's right here. Yeah, a little sidestep right there. Marion Barber almost breaks away again, but... Well, he's going to break attack. Von Miller. Goes and wraps him up right there with the one hand. Gets him down to the ground. I'll tell you what, Von Miller's got one heck of a motor on him. He does not stop. Now third down and 10 for Chicago. They must get to the 31 for a first down, and they cannot, as that pass from Haney was high, he was looking for Barber. Oh, did he just miss a huge play? Caleb Haney has Marion Barber. He is completely dropped in coverage. I mean, he is he's still running right now if Caleb Haney gets him the football. All he had to do is just get it right over the line of scrimmage and put a little bit too much on it. Misjudge that totally. Well, you know, backpedal a little bit more, step up, do something, but give yourself some time to let Marion Barber come into the middle of the field. Oh, that was going to be a huge play. Instead, it's Podlish punting from his own 10-yard line. With kick, Cosby waiting, takes it at the 24. Up the sideline, 12-yard return out to the 36. Sam Hurd made the tackle, 55-yard punt. Tim Tebow and the Broncos trailing the Bears here in the fourth quarter, 10-0. Hester worked on by the Bears medical staff. A 26-yard punt return by Hester, which led to the first score of the game. It's now 10-0 Chicago. Tim Tebow and the Broncos start from their own 37. Penalty marker as Tebow loses the yard, takes a hit from Charles Tillman. Holding, number 73, offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. You know, they go with that empty backfield, Darrell, and, and they, they try to run the quarterback draw. But the Bears, they didn't just run for, they rushed four guys. They had five guys on the line of scrimmage, and they were coming. And you see Brian Erlacher right behind there. I mean, he is right on Tim Tebow. And whatever, wherever he goes on the field, he is making sure he doesn't have a big play. And goes the right guard, Chris Cooper was flagged, now first down and 20. Tebow, 0 for his last 11, took a hit from D.J. Moore as he completes the pass to Demarius Thomas. And for Tim Tebow, his first completion since the first quarter. Mm. Well, he stood in the pocket here. He doesn't see D.J. Moore coming off the slot. It's his blind side. Maybe not so much the hit from D.J. Moore, but as he falls into his own player. 14-yard completion. His last completion came with over four minutes remaining in the first. Empty backfield for the Broncos, who trail by 10. Second down and six. Tebow's pass to the 49-yard line is caught by Thomas. 
for a Denver first down. So Tebow, after the 0 for 11, has hit on his last two pass attempts. And he has led five fourth quarter comebacks, fourth quarter or overtime this season. A look at the scores. The open game was tied. Denver trailed in the other four, came back to win. Yeah, the 15 points at Miami with the onside kick. So this is uh, this is not territory that they have not been in before. Complete to Matt Willis. Third straight completion for Tebow. And Willis takes it to the Chicago 36-yard line. I'll tell you what, his offensive line is doing a great job of stoning that Chicago Bears defensive line on the line of scrimmage and giving Tim Tebow plenty of time to find his receivers downfield. First and 10 from the Bears, 36. Tebow has hit on his last three pass attempts. I would, uh, I would take that play and cross it out. Yeah, throw it away. Uh, this this Bears defense is too fast. He's going to the left. He's got Erlocker, Erlocker that's going to close him down on that side. You can see him right there, 54, just eyeing him. He's running right with him. He's got to stop. Now here comes Craig Stells. The other side. They're disciplined. They're fast. That play is not going to work. Loss of two. Especially when you're running it straight at Julius Peppers. Empty backfield, second down at 12. Tebow with time. And Franklin went downfield. Ball is loose on the hit from Adonaje. And the Bears have it. Stelts and Adonaje with the pressure. Second Denver turnover. You just got to know when that play is over. Yeah, Either exactly. get in, get out of there and run with it or throw it away. But as soon as he sets right here, now he's going to drift back and reset again. Get rid of it. Either run or get rid of it. Those offensive linemen can only go and hold up for so long. They do a great job. Give him plenty of time to look for a receiver downfield. Greg Stouts comes in. Tell you what, this kid is playing a great game today. Yeah, I mean, it's followed up a great Chris game Conte. from last week. We you know what he did for Major right last week. I mean, Greg Stouts. He steps in in a supporting role and just a great game against Kansas City last week and another one this afternoon. Now Haney calls timeout. That is the Bears' third and final timeout. Big play by Stelts, the strip of his rival in college. Stelts out of LSU. Bears recover. Today's game is sponsored by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. Chicago Bears take over at their own 45-yard line following the Broncos' turnover, the strip of Tebow. Haney hands it off to Barber. Barber out to the 46-yard line. Gain of one with under nine minutes remaining here in Denver, and the Bears leading by 10. And this Chicago Bears defense has come up with some big plays to help out their offense. It's time for Denver's to do the same. You know, we, we have we've kind of lost sight of how effective this defense has been during this run. A lot of the credit has gone to Tim Tebow and these these fourth quarter finishes. But this defense is one of the big reasons why they're able to have those comebacks. They've got to get a takeaway here from the Bears. Bears have not turned the ball over today. Second down and nine. Here's Barber up the middle to the 47. The eight of two. Joe Mays made the tackle. Brian Dawkins on the sidelines. You got to love Brian Dawkins. I mean, he's not in the game. He's injured with a neck injury, but he is still going to go do whatever he can to keep that team moving. Every, every team had one of them on there. You know what? I think Philadelphia thought that, that he was not going to be able to yeah. play at the level he's playing at out here in Denver, and they have been searching but not for Brian Dawkins' replacement no for years. Dawkins' third season with the Broncos after 13 years as an Eagle. Third down and seven. Bears keep it on the ground with Barber, and he runs right into the arms of Robert Ayers. So the Bears will punt it back midway through. This fourth quarter. I know you've got a, a wow. thought process in these situations, Tony, but does it change at all when you've got Tim Tebow and this Denver offense having done what they've done in five games this season? That, that was a pretty conservative series of plays. Real right conservative. There. You know, at, at some point you got to say, listen, we got to go and take a shot, you know, put it in Haney's hands a little bit to get us a first down. But, uh, you know, 
three runs right there, and I'll just, just pump the ball and play defense. When you have a defense like the Chicago Bears, you can make those decisions. And over end kick. Taking up the eight on a fair catch by Cosby. Under seven minutes remaining here in Denver. The Broncos have scored in 305 consecutive games. Second longest streak in NFL history. And they have never been shut out at home. They trail the Bears 10-0. Start from their own seven-yard line. Ebo back to the end zone. Stays on his feet. Now throws. And Eric Decker. Able to make the catch. Oh, oh my goodness. Top of the 40 line. You know, I'm standing right behind. Brian Erlacher and Lance Briggs are keying on Tim Tebow. They're not going to let him go and run for a first down. They bring the pressure right there, but Tim looks down the field. The only thing I'll criticize Chicago's defense on right now is, is when they've let him escape, he, they have let him escape to his left. And those are the types of plays he can make. But. Yes. He's completed his last four pass attempts. Turn your hands drop. the other way. Can't catch with your hands that way. That's Thomas again, his third drop. He's not ready coming out of his break. I mean, that's that's what happens. And then when he comes out of his break late, look at he's got his hands turned that way. You turn him the other way. You're not fielding a ground ball. You're not going to get many opportunities with Tim Tebow, but you got to make those catches, and that's one thing that they have been doing today. That's their fourth drop. Three of the four committed by Thomas. Second and ten. Check it down. Got Jeremiah Johnson wide open off to your left. In this situation, check it down. Let him get some positive yards after the catch. Keep your eye on 37 as he comes through. He's going to pop wide open. To Tim Tebow's right, nobody picks him up in coverage right now. I thought he was checking it down to him right there. Oh. Now third down and ten. Broncos must get to the 40. Reverse. Tebow continues to backpedal. Now complete to Decker, but pass game's only two yards. Up front, that. the Bears ran a nice little stunt right there. Still not got a pressure with four guys, though. Tim Tebow's had a lot of time in that backfield. Yeah, but uh, the Bears will let him just continue to drift back, back, back. I mean, yeah. he's, he's got to learn. He's either got to break and get out to his left, or he's got to step up. I mean, you cannot continue to just drift backwards. Quit punting from his own 21-yard line. Angle towards the sideline. That's a great punt. Gets it out of the hands of Hester. Five forty-one remaining with the Bears leading by 10 on Friday, January 6th. It's one of the most anticipated bowl games of the season. Eighth-ranked Kansas State takes on number six Arkansas in the only Big 12 SEC showdown. Our exclusive coverage of the 76th Cotton Bowl Classic live from Cowboys Stadium begins at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, January 6th in high definition on Fox. 10-2 and two versus 10-2. and two. You look at Arkansas, their two losses, LSU and Alabama playing for the national championship. And then for Kansas State, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma, the co-champions of the Big 12. So it's going to be a great matchup for the Cotton Bowl. It'll be a great night. From the 17-yard line, Khalil Bell. Marcus and Thomas does a nice job of going and penetrating there. Getting in the backfield and making the tackle this time. Timeout. Goose is taken by the Broncos. They have one remaining. The big thing today, though, is, is that the Chicago Bears defense has taken the ball away. They've given this offense an opportunity. Devin Hester with some punt returns. The special teams. The blocked field goal by Julius Peppers. The other complimentary parts of this team have really come up big today. There's Charles Tillman in the first half with a very athletic interception on the sideline. And then the last series when Tim Tebow had started to move the Broncos into scoring position, Craig Stelz knocks the ball loose. But Brian Erlacher and his group have done a nice job today. You always talk about the takeaways when you talk about the Chicago Bears defense. 
And that has really been the difference this afternoon. Second down at 11. It's Bell. He gains a yard with five and a half remaining. We check in on the 49ers and Cardinals with Kurt. 49ers trying to hold off New Orleans for the number two seed, but Arizona trying to get the upset. This is John Skelton to Andre Roberts. Three yard score, and the Cardinals are on top in the fourth quarter. 21-19. Kenny Moose and Goose, I know you had that in preseason, that Skelton to Roberts connection, right? In my fantasy league, Kurt, I had it all covered all, all different ways. And the Cardinals, should they beat the 49ers, would go to six wins. Broncos, by the way, use their final timeout. The Bears at 7-5. and five. They already know that the other two 7-5 and five teams heading into play today have already won. Detroit and Atlanta. And there's a big game tonight. Dallas versus the New York Giants with 7-5 and 6-6. And six and six. Third down and 10 of the Bears. Keep it on the ground on third down once again. Khalil Bell out to the 24-yard line. Stopped three yards short. So the Bears will punt it away and give it right back to the Broncos. They're just trying to run this clock down. There's, there's two drives in a row that we've seen. You know, just running play, running play, running play. And, uh, you know, they're not trying to get the, I mean, they are trying to get the first down, but they're just trying to go, pin them back, let their defense come out here, and let their defense win this game. Well, they, they forced them to burn all their timeouts, Goose. And, uh, you know, Absolutely. Adam Podlish has been doing a good job here punting the ball. This will be his 10th punt today. There's the 10 nothing punt number 10. All right, Adam Podlesh. Take it up to 31 by Quan Cosby. Six-yard return out to the 37. Nice coverage by that Chicago Bears. Corey Graham does a great job right here. Eyes on the guy who's going to get receive that ball. You know what? That is not easy, Daryl. No, it and is you, not. Me and you both know that. Open field. Fighting off guys that are trying to block you, do whatever, do whatever they can to go and get in your way, and uh, timing it so you don't get a penalty. Wrap it up for a nice tackle. Graham leads the Bears in special teams tackles, so the Broncos go back to work from their own 37. Out of timeouts, they have never been shut out at home in franchise history. Tebow's pass is caught by Lance Bell, but Tim Jennings is right there to make the tackle. Eight of seven out to the 44. Make the tackle and keep that clock running. He doesn't allow Lance to get out of bounds and stop the clock. We approach four minutes remaining here in Denver. Second down and three. Tebow once again complete to ball for a Broncos first down in Bears territory. You know, you might be wondering, Tim Tebow is looking downfield trying to get that big play. But those safeties right back here for the Chicago Bears are playing 25 yards deep and letting everything happen in front of them so they don't give up the big play. Nelson Conti. Check down to Jeremiah Johnson. Johnson to the Bears, 39. Erlacher brought him down. Three and a half remaining. From the 39. Tebow complete to Johnson once again. Tillman forced him out, so the clock stops with 3 11 remaining. Another Broncos first down. It's a nice effort there. I mean, it's something small in this game but the ability to stop this clock you know no don't go down on first contact be able to fight keep your your momentum going down the field and get out of bounds Tebow four for four on this drive all of the completions to the backs ball of Johnson Tebow fires and the catch is made inside the 20 by Matt Willis and Tebow is now 10 for his last 12 after the 11 straight incompletions. It's the fourth quarter. Clock continues to run. Broncos out of timeouts. 2.45 remaining. Denver trailing by 10. 
first and ten from the Bears, 17. Pass caught and taken down to the 11 yard line by Demarius Thomas, gain of six. You gotta hurry up, get that ball clocked. Yeah, a little Leave faster. A sense of urgency right here. We got too many offensive linemen walking. You gotta get a couple plays off here before the two minute warning. From the 11 on second and three. Tebow takes off. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown! Demarius Thomas! just a runner when he steps up watch his eyes down the field the whole time and some guys are just going to tuck this and take off great presence of where the line of scrimmage is not crossing that and with your eyes down the field the opportunity to find Demarius Thomas uncovered in the back of the end zone oh and you have a quarterback scrambling like that on defense they tell you play just like you're playing basketball find your guy and stay with him and that's not what the Chicago Bears did Raider adds the extra point so with 2.08 remaining, Tebow with an 11-yard touchdown pass to Thomas. Broncos pull to within three. And how big was that decision by Lovey Smith to go for the 57-yard field goal? Robbie Gold hit it for a franchise record, which made this a 10-point game at that point. Well, Tony had told us that there were 58 pre-game, so you go and tell your coach what your distances are. So at 57, you take that shot with the seven-point lead. You roll the dice a little bit. It was a big field possession game at that point. But now, what do you do now? If you've got the two-minute warning coming up, it's only a field goal. You've got Pre Matt Prater on your team. He's got a big leg. Do you kick it away and play defense, or do you onside kick it here? I mean, this is going to be interesting to see what the decision. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Denver Broncos kick it away, knowing that they're up here at mile high, air's a little bit thinner, ball's going to travel a little bit further, and you go down, you play great defense, you get an opportunity for a long field goal to tie this. Yeah, because the Chicago Bears have not been really, you know, doing a great job of getting first downs. They've been running the ball, running the ball, trying to run the clock out, and uh, it's, it's sort of uh, going against them right now. But the problem is the Broncos do not have any timeouts. So I wouldn't the be surprised. Stop at the two-minute mark. That's well, about all they got. Right? Well, so I wouldn't be surprised to see an onside kick. And really, the, the, the really crazy run here with these comebacks started in Miami, down 15 in the fourth, and it was an onside kick recovery that allowed them to win that game. Wow, with the way they're lining up right now, that center of the field is wide open. And the laces are pointing straight down the field. He doesn't have that ball turned one side or the other. It is an onside kick by Prater. It bounces up in the air. It's knocked ahead and is recovered by Nick Roach of the Bears. That ball they had an opportunity. Holy air. moly. Wow. That ball was floating like a balloon. They did a great job, Denver, of going and blocking the guys up on the line of scrimmage. Watch them right here. They don't care about the ball. They're blocking the guys. Everybody's got somebody. Now they got to go out and go get the ball. Oh, two of the guys oh. going for it. Mario Hagen and David Bruton are going for the ball, and they kind of bump into each other. Watch right here, 29 and 57. And it landed in the hands of Roach. So with 2.05 remaining, from the 49-yard line, Haney handing off to Barber. And now the clock will stop at the two-minute warning. The outside kick by Prater, recovered by the Bears. Two minutes to go in Denver, Chicago by three. What a job by the Bears defense today. Yeah, barring a turnover right now, I don't, I don't think Denver can get the ball back. If they have a run here that goes beyond five to six seconds. Here's Barber. Stay in bounds. Oh, wow. What a mistake. A huge mistake by Marion Barber stopping the clock. Uh, the Bears would have been able to run the clock all the way down with two plays, the 40-second clock in between both. 
And they would have been able to let the clock run down prior to the punt, but Barber goes out of bounds, stopping the clock with a minute 55. It is now third down and five. Fans on their feet here in Denver. From the 46, it's Barber, and he is stopped after a gain of just one. What a huge mistake by Marion Barber on the previous play. You give him a chance. That's all that this Denver team wants is a chance. And that guy right there, Tim Tebow, when given a chance before, he has come out shining. What was Marion Barber thinking? I have no idea. I mean, it's it's one of those situations you work at it in practice all the time. I mean, the coaches tell you about it. And then to just completely lock up in that situation and go out of bounds. Play clock winding down. Bears will take a delay of game. Broncos will get the ball back. They scored a touchdown on their last possession as Tim Tebow went 7-for-7 seven for, seven for 63 yards, including the touchdown pass to Demarius Thomas. And remember now, we only need a field goal to get this thing tied. Matt Prater has got a big leg. He was dead on 70. He hit, it, he hit a 70 yarder in warm ups. And it, and it went through, and he still had a little bit more leg there. That's not what, He needs Julius Peppers coming up the middle, though. Oh, oh. He's got to get it over those big mitts. Podlash punting for the 11th time today. They have overloaded this side. Podlesh gets the punt away. Taken at the 11 by Cosby. And he's pulled down at the 19-yard line. Jabara Williams, a tremendous tackle on special teams. So Tim Tebow, 7-for-7 seven seven on the last drive, will get another opportunity with his Broncos trailing by three. No timeouts, 56 seconds remaining after the huge mistake by Marion Barber running out of bounds. I'll give Quan Cosby a little bit of credit right there, too. When you're going for a punt block, most of the times you're going to fair catch that ball. That would put him back a little bit farther. A nice, aggressive job catching it. For some reason, Darrell, I knew it was going to come down in this kind of scenario. Here we go. Tebow on first and 10 from the 19. Tebow throws across the field to Decker. He will try and get out of bounds, and he does. I know that Marion Barber would love to have that run back on that last series. I mean, he's sitting there all by himself right now, knowing that his mistake has put his team in this situation. On second and two, Tebow to Lance Ball. Under 40 seconds remaining. Chicago's going to give you everything into the middle of the field. They're going to rally up and tackle you and make you burn that time. Tebow will clock it. 30 seconds remaining. Matt Prater, as Goose mentioned, hit from 70 during warm-ups. His career-long in an actual game is 59 against the Jets last season. And if you watch this ball, it doesn't come close to that crossbar. He gets it by at least three or four yards so 71 72 Broncos without a timeout second and ten 30 seconds on the clock Tebow throws complete to Matt Willis and Willis out of bounds at the Chicago 41 yard line well, here's another huge mistake by the Chicago Bears. You're going to allow people in the middle of the field to catch the ball because they can't get out. Look at the cushion on the outside by Tim Jennings. And then he runs deep. You got three guys going deep with Eric Decker. You forget about Matt Willis. Man, you got to give your, your defensive lineman at least a little bit of time to try and get to him. Right now, from this spot, a field goal attempt will be 58, 59 yards. 23 seconds remaining. Tebow's pass is incomplete. No flag. 
Jennings. Tim Jennings on the coverage. Thomas, the intended receiver. Oh, that was close right there. Yeah, I thought Tim might have gotten there a little bit early. Yeah. Let's take a look at it right here. Yeah. yeah. I think he's there a little bit early. Not through the back, but he makes contact. I think because his, he had his hands up in the air, Tony, instead of coming through over the shoulder, he might have gotten away with that one. Now 18 seconds remaining. Second and 10 from the Bears, 41. Good decision by Tim Tebow right there. You can't take the sack, but you also don't want to put your running back in a position where he's got a catchable ball. Because just instinctively, you're going to catch that. And if he does, I think that the game is over right there. He's not going to get to the sideline. Understand the situation. Allow your kicker to at least have the opportunity to tie this game. You cannot have a negative play in this situation. And they were very close on that last play to having one. That's exactly what he has to do in this series. If he doesn't have it, get rid of the ball. He must and throw to the sidelines in order to get the field goal unit out on fourth down. Moving to his left. He's running. Bounds at the 40. So here comes Matt Prater and the field goal unit out to attempt a 58-yard field goal to tie this game. Well, they blocked one already, and that was only a 29-yarder. This one's going to have a lower trajectory because of the distance. That middle of that. And there's Julius Peppers lining up right over the football right, right now. <laughs> you know it. Career long, 59. This will be a 59-yard attempt. Colquitt will place it down from the left hash with the Bears leading by three. Crater from 59 yards out for the tie. The kick is good. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Lovey Smith is on the sideline of the Chicago Bears. He cannot believe what just happened. I'll tell you what, Goose, it's unbelievable. unbelievable. It's, it's a non, it's a non-winnable situation that we just watched this team come back and tie this game. And again, we talked with Lovey Smith yesterday, and he talked about like negative chain of events during the course of this two-game losing streak. He went back to the Oakland game and talked about the chance for points at the end of the first half when they had the big interception that Oakland got points from. The Hail Mary last week against Kansas City. You've got this game won. Denver's not even going to get the ball back if and Marion Barber, Barber yep. stays in bounds. I mean, it's just amazing how things happen. Here's the play right here, Marion Barber. Watch, he runs to the left-hand side. All he has to do is stay in bounds. Go down to a knee. That's it. He can't get out. He, he, he thinks about it too late. Shakes his head when he gets up. And he gave Tim Tebow a chance, and he made the best of it. Incredible. The Broncos scored 10 points in the last two minutes, five seconds. How about this, guys? Tebow in the fourth quarter, 15 of 20 for 163 yards. I don't even know uh, what to say. I, I, know, I, know, I, know. I don't. I don't know what to say. It, it can't continue to happen. No, How does it continue oh. to happen? Three seconds remaining as Prater kicks it off. Hester from eight yards deep takes it out. Why not? And we are headed for overtime in Denver. Tim Tebow leads yet another fourth quarter Denver Broncos comeback they trailed by 10 with just over two minutes remaining scored a touchdown with 208 on the clock with no timeouts remaining the onside kick was unsuccessful Bears would have been able to run out the clock following the two minute warning but Barber went out of bounds Broncos got the ball back and Matt Prater Kicks a 59-yard field goal to tie this game. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the Chicago Bears are stunned. Uh, I'm I looking at their, their sideline. They can't believe what just would happen.
You know what? And how important is that going to be to get rid of that feeling as you go into overtime? Oh, man, I'll I mean, tell you. The Denver's We're about to get right in the high right now. Period, up to 15 minutes. Each team gets two timeouts. All of the challenge will be handled in the booth. The first team that scores wins. If neither team scores, the game ends in a tie. Chicago gets to call the toss. Heads, tails. Do you want tails? It is tails. Chicago gets the ball first. This end of the field. John Fox said Tim Tebow is a football player. The definition, competitive greatness. What an example we just had at the end of this game. Robbie Gold hit a 57-yard field goal early in the fourth quarter. Matt Prater a 59-yard field goal with three seconds remaining. This is the first time in NFL history there have been two field goals of at least 57 yards in the same game. It's never happened. Why, why should that be anything new here? I mean, I, there's, this was an unwinnable game. I, we were watching the game. I, the magic has finally come to an end. They Every can't do it Denver. again. Bears will get the ball first in overtime. Prater knocks the kickoff through the back of the end zone. So Caleb Haney and the Bears will start from their own 20-yard line. Haney today, 9 of 15, 76 yards. He could only watch the Tim Tebow magic late in that fourth quarter. Tebow told us on Friday the fourth quarter is more about will and heart than skill. I think he had all three. Yeah, he's got all three. We talk about intangibles with Tim Tebow, but he's got the skill level, too, and the skill set. The Bears have gained only 11 yards on their last four possessions today. Heaney on first down completes. So they gain more yards on this play alone than their last four drives as Johnny Knox gained 17. It was one of the things that, that Mike Marks talked about when he talked with Caleb Haney. You know, maybe I'm not giving him enough. Maybe we're not being as aggressive. Your first snap, come out, throw the ball, you get your big play. They were ultra conservative down the stretch in the fourth quarter. The Broncos defense must hold here after the tremendous job by their offense over the last couple of minutes. Haney able to get rid of it, and it's complete to Roy Williams. He was about to be sacked, and he fired across the field, and Roy Williams makes the catch for a gain of five. You got to like this kid. I mean, here comes Von Miller right into his face, takes a hard hit to the ground, somehow gets the ball all the way out to Roy Williams. I mean, that's a, that's a heck of a throw to me. Give him an opportunity to make that catch. You see the red line at the 41, signifying where the Bears would need to get. Robbie Gold hit that 57-yarder earlier. Marion Barber makes a diving catch at the Denver 41. Don't you like to see that? There's the guy that made the critical mistake in regulation. And does he get a great catch here? It sure looks like he's got that clean. That is a great catch by Marion Barber, making up for that big mistake in regulation. From the Broncos, 41. On first down, Haney throws it away. You saw that red line moments ago. Right now, if the Bears do not gain another yard, this would be about a 59-yard field goal attempt for Gold. Great concentration by Marion Barber here, all the way to the ground. Gets his hands underneath it, rolls it over, gets possession. And remember, there are no challenges in overtime. Everything must come from upstairs. That was close. That was really close. Bears do a nice job of getting that next play off, so you can't go backwards. Yes, they did. They hurried to the line, Goose. Second and ten. From the Denver 41, we are in overtime. Broncos with 10 points. The last two minutes, eight seconds of regulation, and this play is blown dead. First charge timeout, Chicago. So the Bears able to call timeout before the play clock ran all the way down. Rodney what else? Gold hit from 57 yards out earlier to give the Bears a 10-0 lead. Broncos came back with 10 points late. Here's a look at the Bears. Franchise record 57-yard field goal on the first play of the fourth quarter. With a 7-0 lead, you saw the distance. It cleared the crossbar. 
Robbie Gold with probably an extra 8 to 10 yards on that kick. It was going the other direction. But the good news is Matt Prater hit his for 59 going this way. Will Tim Tebow get another chance? 15 of 20 in the fourth quarter, 163 yards, and a touchdown. On second and 10, Marion Barber. Hard to bring him down. He gains three to the Denver 38. I'm impressed by this Bears offense right now because I mean, they had to be so flat after watching the Denver Broncos come back and tie this game in regulation. They get the ball back first in overtime. And a team that had been very conservative down the stretch in the fourth quarter comes out much more aggressive. They've had guys step up and make plays. Field goal attempt from this spot will be 56. Third down and seven. Barber breaks free, lost the football. Barber fumbles. Oh. And it is recovered by the Broncos. Elvis Dumerville with the recovery. I don't know, Dow. <laughs> The chain of events that have happened in the last few minutes have been unbelievable. I but think I thought Marion Barber was about to break this one free. I thought he was going to go for six. You're absolutely right. Ball comes out. Denver recovers. We didn't think Tim Tebow was going to go and have an opportunity. Wesley Woodyard with the fumble. Woodyard the strip. Doomerville the recovery. First Chicago turnover today. It comes in overtime. Uh, I feel my heart breaks for Marion Barber. From the 34, Tebow on first down. Throws it out of bounds in the vicinity of Matt Willis. There's Woodyard who came up with the strip. The force fumble of Barber. It was the GOAT late in regulation when he went out of bounds with a minute 55 remaining in the fourth, and now... And makes that huge yeah, catch that's right. earlier in this drive to get him into the position to be able to make that field goal, or kick the field goal. <laughs> that red line, can't believe we've been talking about this, that signifies <laughs> a 70-yard field goal attempt that's... for Prater. There's Tebow on second down, able to get rid of it. He was about to get sacked. So Tebow making something out of nothing, taken out to the 36-yard line for a gain of two by McGahee. It looks like he's going to get sacked right here. He's in the grasp. Shuffle passes it up front right to McGahee. And that came loose on Willis McGahee, I think, yeah. too, on the first contact. Third down and eight. Tebow fires. The pass is caught by Demarius Thomas for a Broncos first down. And here's a guy who had critical drops all afternoon, runs a great route, makes a nice catch. I mean, somebody's just got to tell Tim Tebow in the first, second, and third quarter. It's actually the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's it. Tebow Bobby. was three for 16 over the first three quarters. Three for 16. 15 for 20 in the fourth. Now in overtime, Tebow goes down back at the 44. Stephen Paya for a loss of two. Broncos have already won two overtime games this year. 18-15 in Miami, 16-13 in San Diego. Second down and 12. Oh! Tebow to the outside, and it is caught by Thomas for another Denver first down. A 16-yard pass play to the Chicago 40. It's just amazing that it's all coming together. It's not just Tim Tebow. It's the other people around him, too. We've seen Demarius Thomas drop balls four, you know, three times this afternoon. Look at this catch. Not when it counts, though. They're in field goal range right here. Thomas with seven receptions, 78 yards. From the Bears, 40. Inside handoff to McGahee, and he is tackled by Erlocker after a gain of one. Don't get conservative now. You don't want to line up for a real long field goal. You've, you've got to stay aggressive with your play calling. Yeah, because if you do miss it, 
The other team has a pretty good kicker also, so they don't have to get very far for him to be in field goal. We have seen 57 and 59 yard field goals today. Tied at 10. 10 10 remaining in overtime. From the 39 on second down. Tebow takes off. He's to the 34 yard line. Before he's tackled by Corey Wooten, Tebow gains five. And this has been typical of Tim Tebow through the course of the season. Look at him through the first three quarters. Three of 16 for 45, and then 18 for 24. That is just unbelievable. 75% completion since the third quarter ended. Third down and four from the 34. And a timeout is taken first charge time by out. the Broncos. Their first. It's been a tough afternoon for Marion Barber. And really, the Chicago Bears didn't have. Denver's not going to get the ball back. You know, you needed a run of like five seconds, and it would have iced the clock. Marion Barber goes out of bounds and stops it. After making a great catch and getting the Chicago Bears in field goal range, the fumble caused by Wesley Woodyard, the first drive of overtime. But again, you know, Lovey talked to us about the negative chain of events that have happened over the last two weeks, and that's awesome right there by Caleb Haney. He's been under the gun the last two weeks with everybody criticizing him and how he's playing the quarterback spot, and he's over there. He knows exactly how Marion Barber feels at this situation, but that the Chicago defense allows Denver to score with 208 remaining in the fourth quarter. If, if they can play defense and force them to the two-minute warning or inside, that starts that negative chain of events. Then you have the Marion Barber decision. You have a, a pass where they blew a coverage and allowed a 16-yard completion and to get out of bounds and stop the clock. Tebow on third and four will gain a yard down to the 33. So here comes Matt Prater who hit a game-winning field goal in overtime in Minnesota last Sunday from 23 yards out. He hit from 59 to send this game into overtime, and this will be a 51-yard attempt. Remember, the Bears blocked a field goal earlier. From the left hash. From 51 yards out, and a timeout is called by Chicago. Second and final charge timeout. Chicago, a 30-second timeout. Matt Prater this season has already hit three game-winning field goals. Either in overtime or as time expired in regulation, all on the road. Broncos have won their two previous overtime games, and following this timeout, he will attempt a 51-yarder for the win after connecting from 59 to send this game to overtime. Now, the last three games that we have done, we have been treated to some great special teams play. The specialists we've had over the last three weeks and the games that we've covered just been amazing, the performance of these guys. And today is another one. Robbie Gold, Matt Prater, today with their kicks, clutch kicks. It's been fantastic to watch. Bonnie Paxton will snap it. Britton Colquitt will place it down from the left hash. Matt Prater from 51 yards out for the win. The kick is good. Tim Tebow as their starting quarterback this season. Yet another fourth quarter comeback. I tell you, if you're not a believer coming into this game, you have to be now. And this is spread throughout the entire locker room. The defense believes in, in what Tim Tebow does. And I think the greatest compliment you can ever be paid by anybody, coach, 
appear is that you are the definition of a football player. That's what John Fox calls him. It's all about his competitive greatness. We will return to Denver after these messages.